So we built an automation for you guys, um, kind of some of the goals that we, we put into to what we wanted to show up, uh, off at Mobility Field Day was, um, you know, simplifying creation end to end for our sites. So both wired and wireless, uh, reducing the reliance on you necessarily having to have programming skills to do these things. Uh, we want to make something portable, something that we can uh, can give to, to multiple people, and they don't necessarily have to be savvy with Python in order to run. Uh, obviously, reducing human error is always a goal of automation uh, when we're not, you know, making things explode at scale. And we also want to reduce the overhead for technical leaders. And when I say that, I mean, I want to enable you to give this to somebody else, a junior engineer, a help desk, uh, to, to, to take care of these tasks for you so you're not tied up uh, you know, creating new sites and deploying get you into more of a, you know, an architecture type role. And we wanted to show something fun for MFD. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the tooling and technology. Um, so we wrote a, a Flask web app uh, in Python. And the goal of this is to provide you a framework to um, uh, input the things you need in order to automate these site creations and configuration. Now, for most of us, when we're replacing our legacy switches, a hard part is actually migrating the configs forward. And in this case, we're actually going to migrate some legacy Cisco switching configs and generate a uh, cloud mist configuration for our Juniper EX switches. Um, and so we're gonna go through parse that and actually build the config automatically that will uh, replace those, those switches. Um, and then to do all of the heavy lifting, we leveraged Ansible. So once we've come up with all of the, the data and collected all the data from you, we're going to push that to Ansible in order to create the sites, assign inventory, configure our switches and sites. And then we're going to leverage some of the built-in features to the MIST platform, like uh, you know uh, auto name generation and auto site assignment in order to have to, so we don't even have to do that part of it. So I'm going to uh, stop sharing here. And I'm going to kick this over to Ryan, who's actually going to run the demo. Here we go. So uh, like Jake said, uh, we have a simple Flask app. That's what you see here on the left. On the right, uh, this is a view of AWX, which is uh, the open source version of Ansible Tower. This is our orchestration engine and our, our programmatic way to get access to Ansible. Uh, so we don't have to, um, you know, write, write our own. Uh, interface for that. It's it's already there. Uh, that's what we're using. Um, and then our MIST organization that we have here, we have one site set up in Cupertino, and we're going to be deploying a couple new sites. We're going to walk through this really quick, and then Jake will go over how this is done, and we can answer some of the questions. So we're going to browse to a CSV file. You know, we have two sites here, Idaho and Nevada. Uh, we're going to upload that CSV. Uh, since we threw this together, uh, it doesn't really have any animation going on, but we can go into Ansible and see that from that CSV file, we are ingesting the site name, the site address, geocoding that information, and then sending it off to Ansible to create that site. So this is just a task list that's running. So we've created one, and the second one is creating, and we can see there's the Idaho site, followed by, that I should be right behind it. There it is. So we now have our two sites. We see over here, they popped up, they were created. Uh, those are, our time zones are set, our locations are set, uh, the address, latitude, longitude, all of that. So we know our country codes. Uh, we're able to get all that information simply from the address and push that into the system. So we move on to the next step. We're gonna take a look at the inventory and we find some unassigned switches. These switches uh, are gonna be shipped out you know, to your site. Uh, so we're gonna pre-configure them before they get there. Uh, now in our case, we have these switches and they are uh, online. I'll show you over here in the inventory. They are unassigned to any site. You can see they're, they're not connected. They are in uh, ZTP mode. Those are ready to go uh, to start being configured once we get this all assigned. So Jake, I believe 255 is yours. And then we can see these other two are mine. We have the status going and we can see that Ansible is now kicking off the jobs to assign those devices to a site. 
So if we go over here, now Ansible is a bit slower, um, you know, than, than doing the calls yourself. But uh, if you're in an organization where you're running that sort of orchestration, then you don't have to worry about rewriting all of these tasks. We can see the show disconnected now because they are assigned to a site. So going back <clears throat> to the next step, we're going to import some switch configs. You can see these are Cisco switching configs. Um, we're going to do a port for port replacement. Um, so we can send out smart hands to, to take all the ports out, re-rack the switch and uh, plug those ports back in. So I load that one and configure it. For Idaho, I'm going to grab Jake's switch config, which we can see there. And then I'm going to configure that. And when we go back to Ansible, take a look. We have those switch templates running. First one's configured. Second one should be done shortly. Done. So we can go to our switch configuration for the site. And we can see in Nevada, you know, not too many. I have a couple, uh, couple networks, a couple different port profiles that were created off of that. But in Idaho, we had quite a bit more. And we can see that all of those networks are created, our VLANs, and then our different port profiles. So uh, what unique configurations did we have? And Jake will go over that in a little bit more depth uh, as soon as we're done here. And then once we have those three sites loaded and those network settings, you know, the, the configuration of VLANs, things like that, now we can go and we can say, I actually want to assign this switch all of the device specific things, host name, um, the, the other information that we were able to gather out of that, um, out of the, the configuration files. And we can see now the Nevada switch actually has a host name and that came directly from the, uh, the Cisco configuration. And we can see the Idaho switch also has a host name. So if we go and we look at the switches in Idaho, you see that now it has a static IP address configured, uh, default gateway, primary and secondary DNS. We have all of our port profiles assigned directly to a port in a one-for-one -one replacement. And then, you know, any extra commands that we need are inherited from above. Now, on top of that, Jake has an access point plugged in to his network. And that hasn't assigned just yet. But if we go to the inventory, oh, we can see the Nevada one actually did. So mine came over, uh, automatically joined because uh, it inherited down the WLAN. So that is online right now. And I should be able to see that. I uh, don't yet. Uh, anyway, the... Uh, we can see it's broadcasting channel 108, 112. It is using DFS. Um, this is online named, uh, got its name from the port configuration and was able to inherit all that information without me touching anything. Uh, Jake's hasn't come online yet. Sometimes these do take a couple minutes to come up. Uh, but that is, that's a quick run through. Um, I know it was, it looks very basic and we didn't have, um, you know, a whole lot of bells and whistles going, but we are going to talk through what the process was behind the scenes and how it actually is not that hard to set this up. Uh, this UI took far longer than any other part of, of building this. Hey, hey Ryan, what, what problems might you see if this was scaled up? Uh, I mean, it's automation, it's made to be scaled. Uh, what issues might you see if you scale this from instead of two sites to 40? So the... The issue that we would see, uh, and we did see it here with the site creation, um, I didn't have the UI set up. You know, you notice when I was doing the switch configuration down here, I had the little spinning notification that it was uh, configuring it and then the check mark when it comes up. For the sites, I didn't have that. Uh, the sites I also did not have running in parallel like anything else. So uh, Ansible does run a little slower than just running the script yourself. So our, our, our claim to fame with the site creation of, um, you know, uh, 500 sites in five minutes, going through Ansible in this process would take far longer. But uh, for this specific use case, what, what I see here is 
I uh, think you're at a, a, a partner or you're at a, a, an organization doing a large rollout and a large deployment, you don't have to send engineers out to reconfigure ports. Uh, send someone out with one of those cable clamps where you can pull out all the cables in one for one so they stay in order, rack with smart hands, while a project manager is taking a couple sites at a time and deploying them to work with the smart hands every day. It's taking the engineer, I think Mitch, you asked about this earlier, this is not replacing an engineer. This is letting an engineer do engineering things instead of an engineer doing point and click things. Um, it really takes the, the, the burden of validating the information because we're able to validate it as it goes through this system. Um, <clears throat> take that burden and the time constraints away from the people that should be spending their time either troubleshooting major issues or working on designs for new sites. The other piece on the scalability side, Keith, um, I'm going to say, uh, if you're trying to do this at large scale, you're going to not want to be doing CSV. You're not going to be wanting to assign this manually. You're going to want something like a network source of truth or a net box that you're storing. Somebody is going in and building that source of truth for, hey, this site has these switches. These are what the ports look like. And then you're just going to read that in and push it to the, the the switches rather than having somebody physically walking through and clicking. Um, that's more for, for demonstration purposes, but um, I, I think that that becomes the bottleneck. We don't want people to be the bottleneck. And as you start to scale up, that becomes difficult. And if I may, Kit, truly, uh, um, uh, this started with a customer, one of our customers, huge retailer, uh, um, they are replacing their Cisco switches. And we said, hey, Jake and Ryan, you know, how can they do this first without uh, error and second automated. And that's sort of, uh, you know, out of the blue, the, uh, the project came about and these guys have 1700 locations where they want to be able to just rip Cisco switch out, put a Juniper switch in, plug the ports exactly the, the way they were and, and it just comes out of the box and works, right? So that's the intent. It is built for scale. This whole Flask app is, is for the demo. Uh, you wouldn't be using, I don't think, uh, a no. Flask app no. with all this. Yeah, this would definitely not be for scale. This is more uh, kind of like a look at what a self-service portal could be. Say you run a, an, a, uh, an event space, a large venue, uh, and you don't want to have to work with marketing to spin up the customized SSID. Um, you don't want to have to take engineering resources away. So you provide a form either in whatever ticketing system you have, like ServiceNow or your own custom form. You let them do that themselves. Put your constraints on it, your error checking and data validation um, and then just let them do what they need to do. Uh, you don't have to answer that email. You maybe even just have an approval workflow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this, this demo is not a, a scale. This is an integration kind of demonstration. Um, the, the scale comes when you put this into a multi-threaded script or, or some sort of other orchestration engine. Um, each of these little templates here, uh, these playbooks that we use, uh, configure switch, create switch template, assign devices to site. There's even no need for that to be individual. That could be one playbook that runs like that. Um, we just did this for the for the sake of being able to step through and show you all of these different processes. I do have a question on it too, though. Sure. From say like an MSP standpoint, right? Is it just as easy as making sure the API keys and you're just pointing to the right spot or how would like an MSP do that if I've got multiple dashboards that I'm managing? Yeah, every every object in MIST has a unique identifier. Um, everything from a client all the way up to an organization. So if you're an MSP, you just have multiple organizations. You just need to align those org IDs before you start doing anything. So, so here's kind of roughly how it works. We started with a CSV file. Uh, our Flask app, Flask app ingests that. We got to do a couple things. We have to go uh, geocode that. We need the actual proper address. We need the latitude and longitude, and we need the country code. Um, and the reason we need lat and long is we need the time zone. So that's kind of where we start. Uh, we've got to get those details right so that site creation happens. We get the right time zone, the right country code. Otherwise, your APs uh, come up. They think they're in, in Thailand, and they don't work. Um, we move on. Org assignment. We're going to pass in uh, the, the MAC address and site ID for each device that we're going to assign to an org. And we're going to get spit back uh, you know, uh, a success or an error based on each one that we pass through. Um, 
Now this is where some of the magic starts to happen. Uh, we're gonna take the Cisco switch configurations and we're gonna pull them into the web app and we're going to parse them looking for things that, um, that we need to configure, uh, need to send to the, in this cloud. In this case, we've got to define our site or our template configuration, uh, which is going to include our networks and our port profiles, as well as the actual switch configuration, which is going to give you the IP addressing um, uh, of the existing switch, as well as each port and what port usage it maps to. Um, this gets a little complex because we're having to identify all these unique combinations of things in the port profiles in order to build those out. Um, but we'll, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, then site configuration, we're taking that payload that we've, we've built by parsing the Cisco config and actually pushing it through, through Ansible up to the NIST API, both at the site level and the switch configuration level. Now, in our example, we did it at the site. You could definitely do this via a, a cross-site template. The way we've kind of structured it is you're going to do it per site and you're going to kind of figure out what's happening uh, at each site and kind of deal with that. Um, yeah, now this you may would be, okay. yeah, this would be, this would be your first step in migration. Um, migrating vendors is always incredibly difficult. Uh, we're, we're translating that config to kind of ease the load there. Um, the next step would be, okay, how do I, how do I clean up all my VLANs? How do I make everything unified across all my sites? And how do I move those configurations from the site level up to the org level? So I have a single template per office, warehouse, uh, you know, per venue type. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a little bit behind the scenes in terms of how the, the parsing actually works. Um, this is the config we used. Uh, I'm just going to run it through. We should get some output in this folder after we've done, after we've parsed it. I click the run button. It's going to, oops, apparently I have a debug in there. Um, it takes about, you know, three quarters of a second. And you'll see that we spit out uh, 25 VLANs and 12 port profiles. These are the unique combinations of things that we actually have going on. So in this case, you can see I have an access port, it's untagged VLAN is 10 and spanning tree port fast is true. Um, we also have some trunks with different allow VLANs. Now this is cool, but it doesn't necessarily be, I wouldn't want to deploy this across a, a large campus. Does that name mean something to you? Um, but the cool part of that is, is that we get some files out. In this case, we're going to have some uh, uh, we're going to have some YAML or some JSON files, and now we can actually go through and edit these and name them. Now, instead of taking the time today, I've already done that. Notice I've named all of these these port usages the way I want, and all I'm going to do is just throw that back into the process. So, if we were actually going to do this for for a, a large company, I would do this, and you'll notice now all of my names for all my port usages have the actual names that I want them to have. So I use that as my starting point. Um, if I were to say, add a second switch at this site, what you would find, and this is part of the beauty of automation, is you'll notice that I now have a couple, I have one here that has the, the generic name. And what happened was, is that switch has a port that doesn't align with my corporate standards that I've developed in the template. And so now I can actually compare that and say, oh, I now either have to say, well, this is a mistake and I need to assign it to a different port profile, or I can say, I need to define what this, this port profile is. And so I have a naming convention and a standard moving forward. So part of the beauty of the automation is that we actually get to look at it from that perspective. And if I had 10 switches or 20 switches or hundred switches at the site, I can now go through and say, I'm gonna go deal with every port that I have. Do I wanna keep it? Do I wanna replace it with something else? I see a lot of spanning tree is turned off on this port, should it be? Um, and, and it gives you a great opportunity to quickly and easily kind of go back and, and make sure that you're deploying good things at the same time as you're not just migrating the junk that you've had for the last 20 years into the network for the next 10 years. So 